You are in the yard where faith and sports collide. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today we have an awesome guest. We got Robert Ortiz, former San Diego State great, former NFL receiver, current professional DJ, current professional, super handsome. Robert, you've always been one of the most handsome guys I've ever known, but we'll get into that later, man. I appreciate that. We typically don't get guys, guys as handsome as you on the show, so I don't like to bring super handsome guys like Robert on the show because it makes me look uglier, but once in a while, for the ratings, we got to bring in some handsome guys and some pretty ladies. Stop so. it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Robert, thanks for joining us, man. Hey, and as always, we've got our lovely and talented Jefferson Drexler. Say hello to everybody in podcast land, brother. Hey, podcast land. Yeah, I bring that pretty quotient down about three levels. But, 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 I got my Chiefs gear. We're representing. That brings it back up this week, right? Because the Chiefs this week finally got to fly their Super Bowl champion flag above Arrowhead. It was a great day. In, in front of who? Uh, in front of the janitor, <laughs> the chalk guy. Um, I think, I'm sure Andy Reid was there. Uh, Had to be. It's, it's one of those dilemmas, like, you know, like if a tree falls but nobody hears it, well, if a flag goes up and, and no fans are there, does it really count? Well, in Chiefs Kingdom, yeah, it does. Well, congratulations, Even here in California. Man. I know that was a long time coming for you. Hey guys. <laughs> All my life. <laughs> hey, before we officially get started here into our game, thank you guys so much for following the show and follow all your comments and shares. Keep it up. We really appreciate it. Hey, uh, do me a favor, go to our YouTube channel, right? And subscribe and, and hit the little bell as well. That'll allow you to see every episode that we have, some behind the scenes you'll get alerted each week. So just go to our YouTube channel. Uh, the name is right there below me. So go there, subscribe, hit the bell, and be alerted on all the great shows. But before we begin, Robert, hey, we got a new game here. Yeah, right. I'm ready. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna play a little game. I typically beat everybody, oh, right? Okay. I'm just saying that's standard, right? And I don't know if it's gonna happen again. We shall see. We'll see. And then we play a little uh, game, we talk about your life, some sports, and the second half we'll come around and talk about faith and sports colliding in your world, man. All right. Perfect. And so uh, tell, tell us about this game right here, Jefferson. Right. So it's very basic. It's wash or toss, giant version of wash or toss. So in the middle there, like imagine it a, a, a dip dish, right? You're familiar with that. I'm familiar with We've got the, the nachos yes. around the perimeter. We got the dip guacamole dip right dish. in the middle. The dip dish. With chips around. Yeah, that's right. The, the nachos. The, yes. the, the dip guac dish. right in the middle. My my family didn't call it the dip dish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the bowl. Yeah, the bowl. The bowl. Yeah, yeah. You get the bottom line is you you get your washer right where the guac goes. That's three points on the outside in the chips. That's one point outside. That's a party foul, and you don't get any points. All right, great. We go to twenty-one. 21. All right, let's go. Guess first. Let's oh, go, perfect. my brother. Thank you. Gang. Oh, so you're going with the Frisbee you know technique. What I'm you got to do what you got to do. Uh, I'm going to go with the the, 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 um, the ro back rotation technique, right, Robert. Let's see, let's see what happens here. Okay. You okay. Did, one you didn't one. really have no rotation. I, no, in that, uh, no rotation. Dang. Correct. See, that, that hurts right there. Get in there. Oh, gosh. Monkey see, monkey do. All right. All right. Here we go. Come on, Marcus. Focus. All right, uh, I will take that. Hold on. Well, hey, hold on. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's two to two. Dude, Let's go, baby. Yeah, it's okay. on. It's on. So it's tied up. Can you grab mine back there? Yeah. Where you go? <laughs> Dig around the set. <laughs> Here we go. I got yours. Trade. All right, Robert. So two two. Um, we met when you were in high school. Mm hmm. Uh, you were a freshman at Horizon High School. Yes, sir. San was, Diego. San Represent. Diego. That's right, baby. I was coaching there. And uh, so tell us a little about your, your 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 football career in high school. Not only football career, you were an outstanding baseball player and you were an outstanding basketball player Hooper, as well. So, you know. so so tell us a little bit about little Robert in high school. Robert in high school, you know, I thought I was, um, you know, I thought I was gonna do some great things um, on the field, on the court. Uh, but, you know, I had a couple obstacles here and there. Uh, in, in football, I think my junior year, I, I got a, had a season ending injury. Um, you know, which led to me not playing baseball my junior year. Uh, but fortunately, I was able to come back and play basketball. So, you know, it was just like, if to me, I felt like if it would have been a smooth all the way from freshman to, to senior, I feel like I would have had, I got would have got recruited a little bit better. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't my case. That was, you know, God had a different plan yeah, for me. Yeah. And uh, I think I, 
it, it made me a better person in the end, yeah. you know, because I had to deal with those kind of... Now, you came from a small Christian school, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Nice, nice. But a lot of, a lot of powerhouse in that school. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. A lot of, first of all, a lot of great coaches. Let me just state that. Our coaching staff. A lot of great coaches. Our coaching staff was <laughs> legit. I mean, we had you, obviously. Uh, coach Gordon. Um, we had Chris Johnson was the head coach. Um, Darren Carrington. Uh, Ronnie Harmon was a coach yes, at some yeah, point. Yeah. yeah. Um, shoot, it, it was great. Jesus Reyes. Yeah, we had so, a lot. so Jefferson, this high school coaching staff was not your typical high school coaching staff. Now keep in mind, this is a small little Christian school in San Diego. Never really done anything at this point athletically, right? And oh, so, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Basketball was but legit. Not, yeah, but not yet. Not it was, football, no, yeah. Well, it was already? Yeah, basketball okay. was good. So they're already on the map. was nothing. Okay, so <laughs> basketball was already on the map. Yes, yes. They had Coach Jones who had led Zach them. Jones. Zach Jones. They had Coach Zach Jones who had led them to two state championships during that era, mm -hmm. right? And so, so basketball's on the map. And, and the, 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 the coaches at the school at the time, we had Dexter Rogers, who was oh, yeah. a former Olympian, mm -hmm. right? We had a soccer coach that was a former pro soccer coach. And the football team was consisted of a couple of former NFL guys, yeah. active NFL, Ronnie Harmon, the great Ronnie Harmon from the Chargers coached with us. And everybody was either like D1, yeah. Pro or all pro coaching this group of kids, man. So it, it was it was so fun, man. So different. Was that just because a bunch of guys who were great didn't want to live outside of San Diego? And they say, I'll go over here. I could go all over the country, but I ain't leaving sunny San Diego. Now, you know what? It was honestly it was something special God was doing. Yeah. Right? I think it was the relationships that you guys already had yeah, outside yeah. of that. And then, you know, what we were building at Horizon at the time, I felt like God was doing something great for sure. And trade. so this team, your team eventually wins a, a, a state championship. Yeah, right? yeah. Talk definitely. to us about that run. Uh, well, yes. I mean, I feel like it was a con, oh. it, 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 was, it was basically, um, because we were all young, um, we all played together from a young age, you know, some of us played since that we were freshmen and some of us played as sophomores. Um, so, we had the experience. So once yeah. we got to our senior year and our coaches, of course, you know, kept us disciplined. They were teaching us good technique and all that good stuff. And not only that, they were giving us, um, they were giving us God in the process and yeah. building us up as, as young men. Yeah. Uh, I feel like on the field, because we, we were getting all that goodness outside, once we got on the field, we took care of business. I'll tell you what, Robert, those were, it's four to three, by the way, okay. um, I'm winning. For you guys keeping score at home, I'm winning. Um, but those were some of the funnest days of my life. Really? Mine too. Coaching, man. Coaching your group. You guys were a special group. And I still reflect fondly upon those days and enjoy these relationships 20 years later. Yeah. Um, it was so awesome. But then you, 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 you took that into eventually getting to San Diego State, mm -hmm. right? The unconventional route. Yes. Uh, but walk eventually on. became a star there. So walk us through walking on at San Diego State to eventually being a guy that was on the top 10 on ESPN's top 10 in a huge game. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't get offered too many scholarships. I had one to, to South Carolina State. Um, and so I, I ended up deciding to um, walk on it at San Diego State. And they told me when I was walking on that, you know, you could potentially earn a scholarship over time. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, all right, I'd rather do that than go to like a JC or something like that yeah. and, and have to learn a system there and then go somewhere else and learn a whole nother system. Yeah. So I was like, I'll get in, they'll get to know me and maybe I'll, I'll do something. And, you know, I worked hard, basically. I, I a scout team player of the year, offensive player of the yeah. year. And, uh, and then going into the next year, Ted Tolner was the coach at that time. He got fired and Tom Kraft came in and, and that was probably the best thing that happened because it kind of wiped everybody's slate, slate clean. Yeah. yeah, so nobody, yeah. Yeah. he's coming in as no the head coach. No allegiances to yeah. anybody, he knows, no parents. He knows nobody, so yeah. spring ball, I had a, a great spring ball. Um, and still, I'm thinking coming into my, it would be my redshirt freshman year, that I'll be playing special teams, not yeah. much receiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Lord, Bless me and I was able to be it was three seniors and redshirt freshmen yeah. when we had juniors and, and sophomores and other yeah. freshmen that were on the team 
it was them, the senior, three seniors and me playing. So um, I got, I was able to get in, get some experience, play behind J.R. Tover, who is the all-time yeah, yeah. leading receiver Great at friend. San Diego Great State. Great friend of the yard as well. Oh yeah, yeah. and um, he's a brother to me. Shout out J.R. Tover. Shout, Shout out, out. Tover. We love you, baby. My my freshman year, just got to tell the story because J.R. always brings it up. He's balling. We're playing Idaho, and he has like I don't know six touchdowns already. We've been hitting him with slants all day. Yeah, yeah. Finally, he gets in a scuffle with the corner, and Tom Kraft goes, "Get him out of there." So I'm his yeah, backup. Yeah. I ran in, right? We've been hitting him with slants yeah, all day. Going deep. Going what deep. do you think we're gonna we're hit going him deep. with? Slant and go. Yeah, yeah. And he, to this day, he still brings it up. You stole my. That was he my first touchdown. He set it up yes, for you. It was my first touchdown. <laughs> and to this day, he's like, "You stole my touchdown." I'm like, "You had six that day, <laughs> and it was my first ever, and you're mad about that." And so it was. That's it's funny. a funny story that What's well, the slant and go, right? You should have told him you ran on the slants and now you had to go. Yeah, now I had to go. I come in with Caught the TV. one over, you know, textbook <laughs> over the shoulder. So you eventually earned your like scholarship? That. Yes, eventually, the, uh, after a season with, with Tom Craft, they put me on scholarship. How did that feel? How did that feel when you earned your scholarship? Walk us through that emotion right there. It was a relief, to be honest, because, you know, actually, it, that's he, you see, he, that? see, he keeps getting these scoreboards. It don't I, matter. I don't know Look. if those should count though. Look, you hitting it off the backboard, Robert. You gotta get it the like the point that, of the oh. game is for it to go in. You're right. You're right. If it limps in or hops in, all right. it don't matter, baby. All right, I'm against it. In. Go ahead. You're still up. My goodness. You're still up. Come on. Ah. <laughs> uh oh. Three. All right, here we go. Here now we we're go. tied. Oh, we're tied. All right, so it's uh five, five, it? five, five, five. Yeah. Um, so getting the getting the scholarship, I mean, it was a relief because obviously I I had I felt like I had worked so hard to 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 ju just even feel like I was part of the team. You know, like yeah, when you're absolutely. at walk on, yes. Uh, even though people are to other people you, that you probably they probably treat you like you're part of the yeah, team, yeah. but in the back of my yeah, mind, yeah, sure. I was like, I'm not part of the team yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so when when they just when he announced it at the team meeting. He was like, uh, we want to announce who we're giving scholarships to, and it was he called my name. I was like, in oh, I was wow. in shock to be honest, because wow. I'll say this: I never even thought about it. Once I got to step really? foot on San Diego State, really? um, my grandfather, rest in peace, he was um, helping me out, you know, with tuition sure. and books and stuff like that. And you know, to me, I was blessed, yeah. you know, and just I wasn't there. just to be yeah, there. And, yeah. I, and I loved playing football. I loved. Being in San Diego, yeah, going yeah. to San Diego State, you know, longtime San Diego State fan as a kid. So to me, I was already made it, but you know, in the back, like I said, I mean, in the you back of my mind. You want to be a scholar. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't in my mind. Like, so when he, when the team meeting, when he said, we're about to do, announce who's getting a scholarship, I was like, what? Oh, man. And the team I called celebrated, my, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, called my parents, you know, they were excited. It, it, was, a, it was a tremendous, amazing feeling. So on my side of things, obviously coaching you in high school and, and loving you and knowing you and rooting for you and being a former San Diego State player, mm -hmm. seeing you go through that and not only start playing, not only earn a scholarship, but eventually becoming uh, a guy that was highlighted on ESPN and doing some great things. I remember a game against Michigan yeah. where you played and I'm on my couch screaming, losing my mind, Robert, mm -hmm. of the things that was going on. Tell us a little bit about that game. Yeah, well, shoot, ESPN, um, prime time, like, shoot, I think it was at noon or something like that on the West Coast. Uh, it couldn't, the stage couldn't be set any better. And uh, I think I'm up one right now. You're up Brother, on so you much. do not deserve it when it goes <laughs> off the TV show. Oh, you're up two. <laughs> It's a I'm up two. Seven to yes. <laughs> so it's, it's a prime time. It's a prime time game. Um, and you know, it, I felt good and went out there, and God just he he opened. I felt like he was parting the Red Sea for me. Yeah. And I say that um, uh, hypothetically and or metaphorically and like literally because there was a play where we did a shuffle pass right yeah and it literally the hole just opened yes. <laughs> and i ran down the field 60 yards 
Should have scored. Uh, do me a favor. For those that have, don't know the atmosphere of yeah. playing on national television in Michigan in the big house, mm -hmm. look into that camera right there and just kind of walk them through what that was like. Well, look, when you walk out of the big house and you just see a sea of people, because the big house at that time, I think it's still the same. It's like 112 or something. 112,000 people. Um, it, it's actually like a bowl, so it kind of goes out like that. And you just walk out and you just feel, you feel the energy um, that you're not at Qualcomm <laughs> or whatever it's when called you can now. See your mom and dad. Yeah, exactly. Where you, you can point people out. This, you, it's just a bunch of just colors, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is about to happen. And um, you know, and then they come out. They're wearing their blues and, and their gold yeah. pants, and they're running out. They got the energy. Um, that just gives you the energy to say, yeah. I'm about to do something yeah. special today. And then you know, whether you're, I would say there was there was times like when we played at Ohio State. We come out, yeah, punch them in the mouth. And then reality set it. <laughs> They're yeah. like, we're Ohio State or yeah. we're, yes. but this game, yes. I'll tell you this, this game, we never, that reality never set in yeah. until the very end, yeah. but it never so set in. Close, we kept, man. we kept their crowd so quiet. Like it was night and day compared to Ohio State. Yeah. Ohio, they have more at, um, they have like 700,000 or 7,000 more. I have 7,000 more than Ohio State. Okay. Uh, they can seat 7,000 more. And uh, at Ohio State, quarterback's here, I'm here, and yeah. he's saying the plays. Yeah. I can't even hear him. Wow, because that's Ohio State. State. Yeah. 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 Michigan? Yeah. Since we were doing so yeah. well, it chirp, was quiet. Chirp, chirp. Oh, you can hear our fans. They're, they had our wow. fans up at the top yeah. by the scoreboard. And you, and you could just see the whole it moving up there. So um, just. Feeling that experience, I mean, that's, that's something you'll never forget. So you had a great junior year. Um, and going into your senior year, high expectations. You finish off your senior year, and now the chance to play professional ball, every Pop Warner kid's dream. Yeah. Uh, I believe your rookie year, you get invited to the Chargers camp and kind yeah. of pick up, pick up the story from there. Yeah, so, um, you know, had the opportunity to stay home. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents live about five minutes from the uh, Chargers facility and, you know, I got to stay home. So it felt good to be able to do that. And then what's crazy is, you know, us Latinos, yep. we got, we have big families, right? Yep. And my entire family is Charger fans. So they actually, I just knocked those. Got it. They actually, you know, you get a guest list, family guest yeah. list. Oh yeah. You oh, know? yeah. And oh, you, yeah. the, before me, there was no limit, right? Yes. <laughs> because not too many people would show, you know, they'd have maybe four it's people, called the Ortiz five rule. It's people. called the Ortiz rule. Exactly. <laughs> Next thing you know, they switched it to like four family members. Oh, I had like grandpa, grandparents, oh, yeah. uncles, oh, yeah. cousins, you know, my yeah, girlfriend yeah. at the time, her family, you know, like basically, everybody that knew me from san diego and so then in a meeting they go uh yeah we're limiting the family <laughs> guest list to four you know oh, and gosh, i was like that's, that's because of me because there ain't funny. nobody else that has that many when i married my wife and she's a, what they call a white girl mm -hmm. right and i'm what you call a latino yeah and she was amazed on how deep we rolled yeah right she was like you gotta go have you ever been alone because right? <laughs> everywhere i go man exactly. nine ten i think you're up one you're okay. up one all right here we go all right i gotta get in the middle jefferson nobody's made this in the middle so far right and you you said your child did your son yeah He's just eight, though, so I'm sure. Oh, okay, you know, okay, thanks. I appreciate it. Takes that, a little Jefferson. bit of work, I guess. Oh, Ooh. that was it. That was the one. What was his technique? All right. Uh, we ten nine. What was his technique? Yeah. Oh, you got three in. He's I did. eight. That is technique. So we're thirteen eleven now. I'm. I, I, I caught up past you a little bit. I want to know what his sir. technique was. Oh, and he? you got to win by two. That's another oh, little hitch. Um, his technique, I think, was was more of the fling from the hip. All right, all right. So 13, yep. 11. Yep. I'm Use up. Body language. Let's see. Oh, I don't like you, that. You, you gotta like will it. it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel good. Oh, get in there. Hey, come on. Bang. Oh, okay. Okay. It just bounced out. Come on. His are oh, bouncing in, or mine are bouncing out. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Keep it bouncing. There you go. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, 
13, 11, 14, 11. One so, major rule that we have here is the game has to end before the podcast ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 I mean, being able to stay home yeah. was a blessing. Like, yeah. it felt good. And my childhood um, sports team. You know, yeah. I grew oh, up watching the Chargers. Absolutely. My dad's friend was uh, Leslie O'Neill. Oh, okay, sure. Um, Chargers, great. Junior say I was my favorite player. Yeah. I used yeah. to wear, in Pop Warning, to wear 55. Oh, sure. Um, obviously, LT and, and all the Drew Brees so, wasn't there at the time, but that was. That, one I of remember my when favorites. I saw you, Robert, in a Chargers uniform. I was crying, man. Really? I mean, oh yeah, because it was like I made it. I think you know I, I mean? think that's how the rest of my family felt too. Yeah, totally. they were there. They made it. I mean, that they was, were on the field that at was practice. Great, man, to see Ortiz running around there, yeah. making catches, came close, mm -hmm. bounced around a little bit. Yeah. Uh, played uh, played overseas, played in Europe, mm -hmm. played in Canada. Yep. Uh, had experiences with with uh, the Patriots, Seahawks, right? With, with Seahawks 49ers. and 49ers, yep. right? You got your cup of tea in the NFL. When that section of your life closed down, then uh, uh, now you're a professional DJ, right? Yeah. And, well, and you DJ, well, pre-COVID DJ. Yeah, yeah, right? it was. Tell us about that. Uh, well, I started DJing at San Diego State ah. for, for fun, yeah. just to learn yeah. it. Because I love music. Uh, my entire family, we love to dance. So you know what? I grew up around music. I don't have any more. Oh, there we go. And um, okay. And uh, so I taught myself. Taught yourself in college. Okay. All so right. once football was over, uh, since college, I had still been DJing on the side for 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 family, for friends, and, okay. and some people that were you know referred. And so once I got out, once I got done. Yeah. I was like, what am I going to do? Yeah, you know, yeah. you, as, as a player, you think you're going to play forever, you know? And I thought, you know, hosting yeah, would be yeah, one yeah. thing, uh, broadcasting, stuff like that. Um, and that's not what happened. So. So we're at 14-11 now. Uh, well, 15-11. 16-11. 16-12. Okay, okay. So, um. You want to grab those? Yeah. Thanks. So I was able to do something that I, I had already been doing for a while and loved. And and it, what's funny is it wasn't until I announced it like on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe, I don't even know if I had Instagram back yeah. when I first yeah. did it. But um, I think it was more so Facebook. Like, I just put out there, I'm a DJ. Yeah. If and you then, need me, call me. And that's how you launched it. And, and literally, it just... I just started booking stuff. So I know now when I go to the Aztecs game, 16-12, you are also the, the, the 16-13, thank you. You're the DJ for the Aztec games. Mm -hmm. That is awesome, man. Tell us about those experiences. How did that happen? Well, uh, at the time, they, uh, actually it was like four or five years ago. Um, one of the football, I think she was the secretary. Her okay. name is Patsy. She, um, longtime friend. Okay. She knew I was a DJ. Yeah. And they had went to, I think it was either Penn State or North Carolina or something like that, where the Aztecs played. Yeah. And they saw they had, saw that they had a DJ and they saw the energy that the DJ was bringing to the game. Yeah. So we so, up. we were 16, 12 there. I had two in. And I had one. 18, 13. Yeah. Let's do this too. Hey, I don't know if you guys are hearing some giggling in the mix. <laughs> but we got some gigglers in the house today. Uh, we got Robert, your beautiful kids, right? Is it Tyson and Kawhi? Yep. Hey, come on out, guys. Come on out. Y'all giggling back there, <laughs> saying me, let me play. Yeah, right. I didn't come here to interview you guys, man. <laughs> you guys want to play a little bit of the game? Sure. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Hold on. Not yet, because I'm going to oh, beat sorry, you first. I'm going to beat you first. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get my W. Hey, this is what we're going to do. You see these black ones here, Kawhi? You're going to help me get mine all right and you're going to help your dad get yours so you right? get mine okay? all right so 18 it's 18 to 12 right now who's who do you think is going to win me or your daddy what Kawhi, who's going to win come back season oh get get over get back over there get out of the show <laughs> <laughs> all right 18 12. Let's hey they just met you you know what i'm saying <laughs> they better save me <laughs> all right 18 12 let's finish strong here game over oh that's oh that oh, here we go. One. That was if one. I get a, if, if you I get, get a, a three, it's over. I get a three. 18, 12. All right. Get in there. Oh, come on. He has 12. I have Hold 13. Up. We'll let Hold you throw you after the game. You keep taking away my points. I had 13. Oh, there we go. Okay. 19, 14? 
Uh, no, 15. 1950. Oh, 1950. Oh, yeah, you gotta get Hey, guys, okay. Get the let's white go, let's go. Hurry get up. The Step white it one. up, girl. Get the Come white on. ones for daddy. <laughs> Wasting time. So, so, basically, they had seen that Thank you. the energy so that the DJ was bringing yeah, to the yeah, games. And yeah. so, she, I was the first one she called yeah. since I'm former San Diego State football player. Yeah. Um, she knew I was a good quality DJ. And, um, yeah, and that's how it came okay. about. All right. 1915, guys. Here it comes. Oh, okay. 1916. We'll, we'll count it off as we go. Oh. Oh, so 1917? Oh, that's 20. That's that's 20, Robert. 2018. Yeah. There we go. 21, baby. Oh, oh no! There's hope. Oh no, wait, you gotta let your kids know. Oh yeah, I'm kidding. I got excited. Oh, I got man. excited. The 2018. Anybody? All right. I need him First to miss. 21. I 20, need him to miss. 2018. So, so Robert's got to get it into the guacamole. Yeah. For shot. He could win right now. And he can win right there. Right, Although go. he's got to win let's by go. two. So he'll need a little bit more, but it can happen. Get in there, get in there. Oh, oh 2019. No wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Here we go. 21, baby. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, 20. What is it? 2020. There we go. It's 20. This is for all the marbles right here. This one right here yeah. for the win, guys. You got to win by two. Oh, no. Hold up, Tony. Hold up, hold up, hold up, Tyson. Hold, hold, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Hold he up. has to throw this. Miss. He has to miss right real quick. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so we're 2020. We're 2020. Yep. Okay, so look. How'd you miss three in a row, though? Come on, it's for the show. It's for the show, man. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, do we want to do this? Do we want to go? Okay. Whoever has the most after this. Like, this is the last round. Okay. Round that's two? Fine. That's what works All for right, me. All right, good. So 2020, oh, whoever comes up. Each count for, oh, oh I thought right. open the okay. All right. open the door for him in there. Oh! Yeah! Oh, yeah! I just said. <laughs> yes! In the hole, baby! Dang. All right. So it can happen. Oh my gosh. That's, That's what I'm talking today. about. Congratulations. Good game. Good game. And you guys stay tuned. <laughs> We're gonna be back with Robert and talk about how hold faith on, and on, sports on. are. Okay. And do that whole thing with a handshake. Okay, okay. Go. Congratulations, okay. man. Okay. And you guys stay tuned. We're going to be right back. Talk to Robert Ortiz and talk about how faith in sports has collided in his world. Thanks, guys. Amen. Welcome back to the yard where faith and sports collide. Uh, again, we have Robert Ortiz, former San Diego State great. NFL wide receiver and current DJ and all kinds of things. Uh, Robert, thanks again, man, for joining us. It's a blessing to be here. Thank uh, you for awesome. having me. Hey, before we move on, as I just want to give a couple thank yous. One to uh, Christian Podcast Central, one of our partners here. Uh, we appreciate them partnering with us, making this happen. As well as if you can check out our YouTube channel, uh, just go to YouTube and the Yard MP, YouTube backslash the Yard MP. Subscribe, uh, get all the episodes, all the interviews, and and stay in touch with what's going on here. But Robert, this is my my favorite my favorite part of the show. Um, this is where we talk about how faith and sports collide. So talk to us a little bit about how faith and sports have collided in your world. Well, I, I would say faith has been a big part of my entire sports career, um, starting in high school when you know I had a fractured nerve channel in my vertebrae, um, paralyzed from the waist down, uh, and the doctor saying I'm never going to play football again. And and then you know, fast forward six months later, I'm already back training. You know, and it in you know, I had to have a conversation with my parents yeah. and let them know that I was uh, gonna, you know, have faith and still play football. And, you know, I told them, look, if God wants me to be paralyzed or lose my life um, or allows that to happen to me, it's gonna happen, you know, yeah. on the street walking yeah, or yeah. driving in the car or something yeah. like that. So at least let me do something I love, yeah. you know, and um, it took faith to go back out there on that field and, um, 
you know, thank the Lord. I, I, I didn't experience anything like that again. So you went from in high school, right? Mm -hmm. Having these dreams, having these hopes, like every, every other American kid, but you actually having real good opportunities in different sports to where you were told you would never play sports again. Yep. Wow. Exactly. The, the doctor, uh, after my injury, the next day I'm in the hospital bed and the doctor tells me, you know, you, you, you won't play sports again. And all I was thinking was, look, <laughs> I play football, basketball, baseball. You know, before this day, I was thinking I play all these sports. I got to get a scholarship in one of those sports because, you know, my parents didn't really have the money to send me to college. Sure. You know, they had two others coming up yeah. and uh, two, two, I had two siblings behind me coming up and they would have to pay pay for them to go to school you know we all went to private school so i knew there was nothing there for me college wise yeah. and that knew that was going to be my only ticket for college and um, so to be told that i can't play sports anymore it crushed me yeah and then after um, you know a few months of just wearing a back brace and, and doing all the necessary things i needed to do to heal uh, I went to the neurologist and, and he gave me the praise report that I was healthy and, wow. and, and healed up and that I would be able to play sports again. Wow. And that's when I decided, you know, I went straight and played basketball. Yeah. Then I didn't play baseball because I wanted to do track to get myself back into shape for football coming up. And, you know, that's when my dad was like, wait, 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 yeah. <laughs> football. I'm like, yes, I'm playing football again. Yeah. You know, so that, that took a lot of faith too. So did you think at that time, Robert, as a young man, that you were just kind of lucky or, or just the things lined up? Or did you know it was the Lord moving in your life even as a young man? Oh, I absolutely knew it was the Lord. I've, I've had the Lord in my life since uh, pre pretty much all my life, but I accepted Christ when I was eight years old. I, I, I remember, you know, we were driving with my dad and I was like, Dad, I want to accept, um, you know, Jesus into my heart. Wow. And, and we went to a park yeah. and that's how we did it. I, you know, remember the park in Sarah Mesa. I remember the plants. I remember the birds and the bee, you know, the, the bees flying around and yeah. it was a beautiful day, you know. So I knew Christ since then. So when tragedy happened to me, yeah. um, I knew that I was going to be okay. I just didn't know what, hmm. what was going to be next yeah. because or what I couldn't okay, play sports. Or what okay is. Yeah, I couldn't right? play sports. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that I, my life is over. Yeah. That just means God has something else for my life. Luckily, he was back in sports. Wow, so he, he carried you through that, you know. Yes. Uh, and then we talked about earlier, you go to state, you walk on, you earn a scholarship, which is, which is an amazing uh, accomplishment. Mm -hmm. uh, you start becoming uh, relevant as a freshman. Then your junior year happens and you face another kind of surprising injury, but yeah. that through it, the Lord was glorified tremendously. Talk Absolute, to us about that. Absolutely. I, it was a Wednesday. So, you know, we play on Saturday, Wednesday night. Um, I'm about to take a shower and, you know, you're barefoot going into the bathroom and I had some uh, a glass, uh, like a glass cup had broken in my house. And, you know, I this is like probably this big, the piece of glass and it was the, the sharp edge was sticking up and I literally just stepped right on it. Right in between, like my, like right down the center of my toes, kind of into yeah, my foot, yeah. into the ball of my foot, and um, rushed to the emergency room. They stitched me up. Um, luckily, the guy we were actually playing Michigan that week, yeah. and the the guy that stitched me up went to Ohio State, <laughs> and so he's like, "Are you a starter?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "All right, we're putting extra stitches." Yeah, extra incentive. Yeah, extra he put the go. extra thick stitches, and he put more than what he was supposed to. And uh, he's like, let me get the deluxe. Thread. Exactly. What's the, what's exactly. the good thread? Bring it over here. Exactly. <laughs> and then I, I, the next morning, I come up to practice on crutches, and my coach is like, what just happened? Tom Kraft was yeah. the head coach, and, and then my receiver coach, Ray Peterson, you know, they had a conversation, and then he comes over to me, he goes, he doesn't want to take he's getting the trip and i'm like oh, what you know this is espn it's michigan this is michigan yeah, yeah. this is a big game and i think they were number eight in, at the time yeah. in the country and so uh he my receiver coach said do you think you can play i said the doctor said i can play you know he said just stay off of it for a couple of days but yeah. you can play on saturday so I tell him that, and he pleaded my case, and basically they ended up taking me. Okay, so, so you go? I go. Right? Not only do you get to go play at Michigan, but I remember watching this 
on the couch with my family screaming because you were just bawling out, yeah. man, and just tremendous. And being from where you might not even make the trip to really probably having your breakout or, or biggest game ever. Is that correct? Yeah, it was the biggest game I had at San Diego State. Wow. And, um, you know, just, I think it helped kind of. Yeah. I'm not saying I, I would wanted it to happen, but I think the fact that I was so focused on my foot, not like messing up my stitches or anything, it kind of took away the anxiety and the yeah. nervousness that I had, yeah. would have had sure. if I had not had you focused it elsewhere. Yeah, I'm focusing I'm focused there. So all I'm thinking is just don't re-injure it, you know, yeah. just go out there and play your game. And so it allowed me to focus a little bit more on the game than, you know, the actual yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. The fact that you're 112,000 people <laughs> out there, you know, yeah. it's number eight in the yeah. country. Yeah. It's, um, prime time, it's ESPN, yeah. and um, so I went out there and, and it's history in the making, man. I had, uh, I think I had uh, five catches, 120 yards, wow. and gets, a touchdown in the first in. half. Oh, come on! In man. the first half, yeah, and um, wow. like I should have had two touchdowns. What was going yeah. through your head? <laughs> what was going through your head at this time? I mean, this is crazy, Robert. Honestly. I worked so hard that when it was actually happening, I, I, I didn't, it wasn't a shock, it wasn't a surprise. Yeah. I think it was more so after the game, <clears throat> excuse me, it was more so after the game when I'm going to, they're like, they're taking me up to the press conference. Yeah, yeah. You know, we lost, we lost by three, but they're bringing me up to the press conference and the DB coach of Michigan yeah. is leaving the, yeah. The, the podium or whatever and he goes he's like man he shook my hand he's like you killed this today and so when that guy tells me that I'm like wow yeah. you know like I did something today and then you know even the the media people were, were talking about it they were saying you know oh the, their Michigan DB coach is giving you so many props and and telling them you know uh, he said something about he needs to our DBs need to you know I, he said something yeah. clever I forgot what it was but I was just like wow like that that right there like yeah. when in the game and when it was happening I just wanted to win the game yeah. and I wanted to I wanted to do well but after is when I actually got a chance yeah. to appreciate it and enjoy the moment yeah. you know my yeah. my dad was at the game he flew out so that was special because I got to see him and, and a couple of his, uh, family members came out for the game and you know they were so excited after the game you know celebrating with me even though we lost yeah i had the biggest game yeah, absolutely so absolutely. and then you know made top 10 espn yeah. so you know, <laughs> i got that i got that to look back on Robert, and show that's my like kids every athlete's dream absolutely right? every athlete's dream is to yep. someday end up on espn's top chris 10, berman man. said my oh, name man. <laughs> <laughs> well what i love about your story robert is that even though it's filled with these amazing amazing events and, and spots and like crescendos along the way and dreams coming true you know from being on ESPN top 10 Chris Berman saying your name from having over a hundred yards in the first half against Michigan having an NFL pro career through it I know that you're a guy that is content with loving the Lord and like you said earlier you knew God was gonna make everything okay mm -hmm. you didn't know what that was gonna look like and maybe that looked like not having sports, which you didn't want, but you knew you would be okay. And that's for me, one of the huge things I love about trusting God is that I don't know what okay is gonna be like, but on my worst day, Robert, worst case scenario, he will supply me with everything that I need. Absolutely. Worst case, right? And then somehow everything he's able to turn around and use it for good and for his glory for those of them that love him mm -hmm. and are called to his purpose, man. So keep loving I, the Lord, man. Know, I think they, that with that said, what yeah. you just said, I think even the people that are not yet like there's some people that are, may not be following him yet yeah. and he still makes yeah. he still makes it a point yeah. to yeah. to uh, do things in their life and hopefully 
yeah. bring them to him. Absolutely. Um, but they're for his glory. There's a verse that says it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. Like, and you're saying like even for the people that are rejecting him, they still get the overflow of God's goodness and, and love uh, and love in us as his children. When we're when we're tripping. Or, or going to the left, to the right, you know what? It's not his wrath that brings us to repentance. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want his wrath, but it's his kindness, Absolutely. right, that yep. does that. Hey, and if you're watching today, and uh, I don't know where you are with God, and, and maybe uh, you have a solid foundation, and that you've trusted him, and, and, you, and, and you know that no matter what, you're taken care of. I just want to encourage you, just, just know that God loves you, no matter what the conditions. He's going to provide for you and share that with your friends. Let them know. And, and maybe you've not made that decision, right? Maybe you, you, you have not given your life to Christ. I encourage you to do that. You know, just right there in your heart, you can just say, forgive me, God. Forgive me, Jesus. Come into my heart. Make me new. And right there, he knows your heart. He wants to you to know that he loves you and that there's forgiveness of our sins and just like Robert has experienced just like I have experienced and just like his children are experiencing that love of their father you know God has that love for us his children so if you never made a decision I encourage you to do it hey join us again next week we're gonna have another great guest have another great time thank you so much guys God bless you and thank you for being in the yard